What's going on everybody? Adam here with E-Trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arc Pack Power Station. If you like to utilize a 12 volt battery to bring power with you on the go, whether you're at a job site charging some of your batteries or if you're overlanding and you want to cool down some of your food or just get some fan going to keep you nice and cool, this is going to be a great way to bring that power with you without having the noise and the smell and all the stuff associated with a gasoline generator. All of our output ports are gonna be protected for some of those more sensitive items you may be charging. We're gonna have a 120 outlet right here, little USB on the side, and then in the front, we're gonna have a two 12 volt outputs for some of those DC devices you plan on using or charging. We can charge things as little as this USB light and also some of your tablets. So this little USB port, when I flip it on, as you can see, it's been charging when we've been out here. We're at 100% charge, and that is awesome. It's also great for charging some of the larger stuff like laptops, TVs, if you're tailgating. But if you are on the job site, I have my Milwaukee tools all charged up, so I'm ready to go wherever I am. But also for some of those consistent electronics, like a little fan I'm plugging in here, or our fridge, it's gonna be great for that as well. It's gonna provide consistent power to cool yourself down, but also it's gonna cool down our cooler to keep all of our foods nice and cool for lunchtime. A lot of you are wondering how much cooling power can I get from the Arc Pack? Well, this right here is a 40 liter camping fridge. It has 12 volt and 120 volt inputs. So right now we have it hooked up to the 120 and it's cooling pretty well, about 10 degrees in about 10 minutes, but it was at around 80 Fahrenheit, but it is cooling pretty rapidly. So if you have something that's more efficient like this here, you can charge it and run it off the arc pack, no problem. When it comes to AC one like this, even though it is relatively small, it is gonna draw about 520 watts. So that's gonna be a little bit too big for the arc pack. If anything is under 300 watt hours, whenever it's running, you can use it with the arc pack. Anything above that, I definitely don't recommend. So take a look at some of the components you plan on running. Make sure it falls within those bounds and that'll give you a yes or no. If you don't plan on using the arc pack for portable power, maybe you're just putting it in your enclosed trailer and hardwiring it so it charges while you're going and then whatever you need to power inside of your enclosed trailer, you use this instead of the battery that runs your electric jack. This does come with a bunch of brackets, so if you are driving around, it's not gonna tip over or slide around at all. Hopefully that gives you an idea of the capabilities of the Arc Pack, but also its limitations. But now there are a couple of different setups that I think would be ideal for actually powering and charging the Arc Pack itself. There's four different ways of charging. If you're preparing for the trip and you're at home, you can go ahead and use this cord, which is included to plug it into your 120 volt AC outlet at your house. But if you're maybe on the go and you're not necessarily to the spot yet, you can use this DC charger right here. So just plug this into your camper, RV, or the vehicle you're towing with. Or regardless of what it can be, you can charge it on the go with this. And this does come with the kit. Or you can do what we're doing, which is solar. An example of a solar setup, we have a Go Power 100 watt solar panel and it's been charging the pack for about 30 minutes or so. The second I plugged this thing in, it started charging, and we have been charging and running the 40 liter refrigerator, and it's down to about 37 degrees. It started at about 80 degrees, and we have 99% charge. You can also directly connect your solar to the box but one thing about this is you will need to use a regulator just because all the other three ways of charging is going to protect the battery from overcharge but if you are going to use the direct line make sure you use some sort of regulator so it's not going to pump too much juice to your battery it has a nice durable housing it's made of plastic but it's thick plastic so it's not like some of those dinky little tackle boxes or anything like that if we go ahead and open this up, then you can see 
where we store our battery. So the battery is not included. These power cords are, so you don't have to get those. But when you are choosing which battery to go with, it is gonna be compatible with any AGM, gel, lead acid, and lithium iron phosphate batteries. And make sure it's 12 volts. The interior is gonna measure about 13 inches long. It's gonna be about seven inches wide, and it's gonna sit up about nine and three eighths of an inch. So take those measurements whenever you're picking out which battery to use. On the screen here, what we're gonna see is our battery. And as you can see, we have a 99% charge and it gives us an idea of how many hours we're gonna have left. And it is charging from our solar panel. But as you can see, when I disconnect, it's going to switch from the charge cycle to the discharge cycle right here. And then right above it, we're gonna see our volts. But what we can do, we can hold down this and this will give us our net watts. So as of right now, we're kind of just using a little bit just to power the screen and stuff like that. But then when I plug the solar panel in, it should give us a little bit of juice after it kind of gets all set up. So now we have roughly around 30-ish watts coming in. And again, this is a 100 watt solar panel, but with the heat and everything that it's dealing with, we're not gonna get full output. But once I turn on the fridge, once it kicks on, you'll see some of that start to draw away. So I definitely recommend getting some sort of solar panel to where you're not drawing as much from the pack because then this way is going to kind of maintain itself as it uses juice, but it'll also start pumping some in as we use it. So as you can see, this thing uses about 60 watts. So with the solar panel, we get an extra 30-ish watts. And then when we're charging and using, we're going to have around negative 20, 30 watts. With the screen, it makes it really easy to kind of monitor what's going on. There's so many different configurations as to charging it and also how many things we can use that charge for. So you can really play around with your setup to see if you are using X amount of watts and you want to get X amount of watts going in. So it's going to last a very long time. If you're worried about drawing too much with some of your components, definitely the heating elements like a heater, a hair dryer, or a kettle, that's gonna to be too much. But even something like this that is really intended to have direct power from your 120 AC at your house, it's going to give you a nice beep when you draw too much. It's gonna cut the power for you and it's not gonna stop until you turn it off. So you don't really have to worry about pushing these things too far and damaging some of your components because it does have safety features in place to take care of that for you. Whenever we're done charging it or done using the power generated by this, what we can do is flip this little switch here and that is going to completely cut everything off and isolate it, hence the name, battery isolator. So this way, if you have 100% charge or 80% charge and you wanna keep that, you turn it to the off position and it'll be exactly like that whenever you switch it back to the on position and need to use it again. After dealing with this thing all day, I definitely recommend it for you who are just going anywhere and just have power on your mind. You never really know exactly how much you're gonna use, but with the little LED display, it really gives you an idea of how much you're using so you can prepare better next time. One thing I would definitely do is I would get the 300 watt one if you're not really sure how much you need. Might as well get more than less, but we also have a 150 watt version available on our site as well. If you were to take my advice, I would grab some solar panels to help kind of maintain that charge as you start using it. And I think it's gonna be great for all sorts of different things. I would definitely use it, and I think you'll find a lot of use out of it too.